Frank X. Walker served as Kentucky Poet Laureate from 2013 to 2014. He's the author of eight poetry collections, including Turn Me Loose, The Unghosting of Medgar Evers, winner of the 2014 NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Poetry, Isaac Murphy, I, I Dedicate This Ride, When Winter Come, The Ascension of York, winner of the Chautauqua Literary and Scientific Circle Award, Black Box, Buffalo Dance, The Journey of York, which won the Lillian Smith Book Award, Afrolatcha About Flight, and the Afrolatchian Sonnets. A, re a recipient of the Lannan Literary Fellowship in Poetry, he's a professor in the Department of Eng English and editor of the journal Pluck at the University of Kentucky. He's a leader of the Afrolatchian literary movement that prides itself in giving voice to previously muted and silenced people and promotes excellence in teaching, writing, art, and activism. The word Afrolatchia, a term that unifies Appalachian identity and the region's African-American culture and history, is his creation and is included in the Oxford American Dictionary. Walker has served as executive director of Kentucky's Governor's School for the Arts, founder and executive director of the Bluegrass Black Arts Consortium, and the program coordinator of the University of Kentucky's King Cultural Center. He holds an honorary doctorate of humanities from UK for his collective community work and artistic achievements, and honorary doctor of letters from Transylvania University and Spalding Uni University. He's a past recipient of an Al Smith Individual Artist Fellowship Award. Please join me in welcoming Frank X. Walker. Before I read my two poems, I want to, uh, to mention the importance of students, of, especially in the space where I look to my left and remember that I was um, a visual art and a journalism major until I walked into Gurney Norman's class. And I left that class knowing I wanted to be an English major. Uh, he changed my life in that one semester. Uh, years later, in Louisville, and the Spalding program, I believe I'm the first poet to graduate from that program 15 years ago. Uh, so I'm very grateful to be able to look left and right to know that I've, I have support here and I'm, that I'm not an accident. I'm going to read two poems that, uh, for me, are very important for multiple reasons. And I think they'll be obvious to you if I just share the topic. And they speak directly to the importance and humanity of felons, former felons in Kentucky. This first one is called, Who is a Real Criminal? An addendum to House Bill 70. It's hard to believe that there was a time in America when a man could be sentenced to a chain gang for selling farm produce within the city limits, that a black woman could be sentenced to hard labor for using abusive language towards a white man. It makes no sense, but there were no paying jobs after emancipation. And since it was a crime to be unemployed, newly freed men and women, or vagrants, were arrested, fined, and sentenced to months and years of hard labor on chain gangs and prison farms to work off their fines, with additional time tacked on to pay for their own upkeep. If we understand that the modern prison industrial complex was reinvented in the South by capitalists, elitists, and unreconstructed Southerners as a means to continue to provide uncompensated labor after the abolition of such, then we understand that slavery as an institution and as an idea never really ended. Redemption and forgiveness and the concept of paid in full should not be a privilege reserved for only the perfect few who never ever make mistakes. If a man or a woman commits a crime and then serves their time, we should treat them like the returning citizens they are, not penalize them for their race, color, or previous condition of servitude. 
And if anyone would still insist on denying them that privilege, a right guaranteed by the 15th Amendment, then who is the real criminal? The second one is called Cold Steel from the collection Black Box. The designer is in the front row over there. Thank you, Naoka. Cold Steel for my family on the inside. Giant steel doors creak, slide, and lock. Silence echoes down empty fluorescent corridors. I rub my hands together, researching my own guilt, as I recognize my inability to distinguish the chill in the air from my fear, from my loathing. Unk caught a dime and a half. Cousin Dookie did a nickel twice. Baby brother, a frequent felon, struck out last time and is now pumping iron in the belly of one of these 21st century Amistads upstate, downriver. Last night in a basement chapel, sharing poetry and praise with the residents of the men's federal prison system. I looked into the faces, connected to the collars, tied to the numbers, married to the hands, holding on to mine, and I saw Unk and Dookie and Baby Bruh chained to familiar nappy smiles and noses, and I squeezed. This one holds 2,000, chants the Polish priest. As we crossed the yard after 30 minutes of security checks, metal detectors, infrared passes, and written and verbal agreements to not transport weapons or other contraband, interrupted only by the reprocess of the men in shackles and cuffs, and a rubber glove, a 300-pound guard lifting a senior non-citizen out of a VA-supplied wheelchair for a semi-discreet body cavity search it is cold here, and the added draft created by the echo of heavy steel doors opening and closing lowers the wind chill factor. So I squeeze these baby brothers' hands, exchanging dap for unk and dookie. I squeeze for warmth for all the loved ones on the outside. I squeeze out of guilt, ashamed of my own freedom that I have taken for granted. What I cannot say with words, I squeeze into these cousins and uncles and eyes, and they gather around and listen like I'm some infamous escape artist come to sing the freedom song. But I'm just a poet, and these are just words, not keys or dynamite, just words, not pardons. But if you rub them together, you can start a fire. And right now, that's what we need, because it's cold here. It's damn cold on the inside. So I squeeze back my tears, and we get warm. Thank you.